high above the town of Chamonix in the French Alps. Plenty of snow for fabulous skiing. Of course, what makes this place great are the mountains, providing a wonderful backdrop for winter sports. But also, the slopes themselves. These mountain landscapes owe their existence to tectonics and the interplay between what happens inside the Earth and what happens at the Earth's surface. Mountain ranges are arguably the most dramatic landscapes on Earth. And of course, there are many different types of mountains. They're volcanoes. And they're what used to be called block mountains, which form on the sides of rift valleys. But when geologists talk of mountains and mountain building processes, they're generally referring to collision mountain belts, places like the Alps. It's what in bygone times used to be called fold mountains. And the Alps are a prime example. You can see why. Cliff sections reveal dramatic crumpled layering, evidence for substantial deformation of continental crust. The layers were once horizontal, but have been folded in places right back on themselves. So the layers have been tipped over. So folding tells a story of lateral compression that has squashed the layering in places shoving pieces over themselves. Fold mountains, as they were once characterised, tell of substantial lateral motion. In modern times, we know that mountain ranges like the Alps form due to convergence between tectonic plates. So let's take this part of the world and step back in time when Eurasia and Africa were further apart than today, separated by a patchwork of small continental blocks. The Alps will form here. As the Atlantic Ocean opened, Eurasia swung over, closing towards Africa. So the Alps are formed by collision between continental blocks. So let's look at mountain forming processes from a geological perspective, collision mountain belts. The Alps might form by collision and have lots of squash rocks inside, but why are the mountains here? So that's Mont Blanc at a shade over 4,800 meters above sea level, it's the highest mountain in the Alps. But why is it here? Well, let's explore the reasons, and there are two distinct reasons for mountains like Mont Blanc, and indeed mountain ranges like the Alps. It might sound a bit obvious, but the most important thing about mountains is that they're high ground, regions of elevated topography. So let's see how this topography is arranged as we travel across the Alps, starting over on the French side in the west. This is the ground north of the city on Lyon, flat land with a patchwork of fields. But as we fly east, the landscape changes, linear hills picked out by wooded ridges. These are the Jura Hills. Like a crumpled sheet in the landscape, the outlying folds of the Alps. Keep going, and that's Lake Geneva in the distance, and Annecy Lake. Cutting into the so-called sub-Alps, 
The landscape betrays the deformation. Great folds of a white limestone layer making those cliffs. But as we continue over, we reach the high ranges, the snow covered peaks of the Mont Blanc range. Further east again, and we reach Italy, mountain ranges carved by the Aosta Valley, the Swiss peaks in the distance. You might just pick out the Matterhorn and Monte Rosa. These are the high Alps. But dramatically, the eastern and south side of the Alps end abruptly as the high ground gives way to the plains, rivers flowing out from the mountains. This is the great valley of the River Po. Let's plot up the landscape to show a topographic profile, greatly vertically exaggerated to bring out the peaks and valleys. We can see the Jura Hills in the west, the subalps, the highest peaks of the Mont Blanc Massif, the High Alps, and eventually the flat ground of the Po Valley. So let's smooth this profile off to look at the topography at a large scale. The question arises, why are the Alps so much higher than the surrounding landscape? The idea is that mountains are like the visible part of an iceberg, and just like an iceberg, the bit poking out the top, the mountains, belies a deeper crustal root submerged below. So what about the crust that underlies the Alps? So consider a block of crust floating on denser mantle below. A thicker block, well, it sinks lower, but the top pokes out higher. It's a concept called isostasy, and it's fundamental for understanding the distribution of topography the bits of crust that poke up around the planet. Different crustal thicknesses give rise to different elevations of the Earth's surface. Of course, in reality, the thickness variations are not accommodated by blocks that move independently. No, the crust joins up so that the behaviour is smoothed out. But high topography should be underlain by thick crust. Let's check. This is a map of the Moho, the geophysical boundary at the base of the crust. It's deeper below the Alps, so the crust is indeed thicker beneath the high ground. Let's compare the crustal thickness again with the topography. These are the points on the base of the crust. Join these up, so this is the crust, indeed thicker beneath the higher ground. On this profile, the slightly bumpy top of the crust shows the Alps at their scale, appropriate for crustal thickness. There's not that much ice poking out from this iceberg. Thick crust reflects squash crust and indeed stacked up crust pushed over itself. It's not the squashing itself that generates the topography, it's the thickened crust that results in the squashing that makes the mountains. So the high topography of mountain ranges like the Alps reflect thickened crust. But there's another part to our story, and rather curiously, it's counterintuitive. It's about erosion, the processes that are removing topography. Let's explain how that works. Our next concept is relief, which is about variations in elevation over short distances. So we need to move away from our smooth topography to show the short range variation. This spikiness is relief, and in the Alps, this relief is represented by high mountains and deep valleys. Valleys like this, carved down by glaciers. So while the peaks reach up to well over four kilometers above sea level, the valley bottom is just one kilometer above sea level. And it's the formation of the valleys, the erosion, that makes for the high peaks. A bit odd? 
Not really. Let's consider a laden container ship floating on the sea. The cabin is the highest point of the ship. If you like, this represents the mountain tops. As containers are taken off the boat, the mass is gradually reduced, so the ship rises out of the water as tracked by the height of the cabin. The fewer the containers, the higher the ship rides in the water. The more erosion of the valleys, the higher the peaks. So let's play this with landscape. We can imagine the highly incised spiky landscape of the Alps of today started off in a much smoother form. But as the valleys cut down, the load on the crust is reduced. As erosion is concentrated in the valleys carved by glaciers, the peaks don't erode down as much as the valleys do. The whole crust goes up as the valley cuts down, rising the peaks just like the cabin on our container ship. So you get higher peaks when valleys cut deeper. So the reason the Mont Blanc's there, in part at least, is because of the valley. So mountains are the products of isostasy. Thick crust means landscapes poke up higher than the surrounding areas on thinner crust. And the highest mountains form in ranges where the crust is thick and erosion has carved deep valleys. So it's about the interplay between thick crust and erosion. In the Alps, it makes for some stunning landscapes and some great skiing.